Welcome to Comedy Global. Fuel may soon join the race in the automobile industry as net zero targets are pursued by more countries competing with a steadily expanding market for electric vehicles. An alternative to gasoline, which isn't electricity, it is a new synthetic fuel produced from nothing but water and air. The fuel was developed by a company named Highly Innovative Fuels, which the manufacturer invested in as a substitute for switching to electric vehicles. How do we harness air and water? The notion that a turbocharger may help improve engine output in addition to larger displacement first emerged in motor racing circles in the early 1970s. Turbochargers are devices that compress intake air and pump large amounts of it into the combustion chambers while being powered by exhaust flow. The additional air that is forced into the combustion chamber increases the power. Porsche took use of this cutting-edge innovation in 1974 and unveiled the first 911 turbo. It was soon realized that cooling the hot charge air might further increase engine efficiency because as temperature drops, air density rises, increasing the volume of air in the cylinders. The result? More power. Therefore, Porsche added charge air cooling to the 911 turbo model in 1977. However, the 718 Boxster and 718 Cayman have a mid-mounted engine which gives them a completely distinct look than the 911 which has a rear engine. Direct charge air cooling cannot be used in the 718s without broader or larger air intake ports. Additionally, replacing the cooling air intakes was out of the question because doing so would have meant losing the iconic design of the 718 cars. Then what was the solution? indirect charge air cooling. By using water as an additional coolant, there is no need to tamper with the exterior body. As a result, the 718s have two cooling circuits, a new low temperature circuit for charge air cooling and a conventional high temperature circuit for the engine. Here is how indirect charge air cooling works. The air intake aperture on the left side of the car's body is used to draw in and filter the combustion air. After passing through there, it enters the turbocharger where it compresses and reaches temperatures of up to 170 degrees Celsius. The cooling process begins here. The hot air is pumped into the integrated charge air cooler on top of the engine and cooled by plate fins, which then transfers the heat to the water in the low temperature circuit. After that, heated cooling water is then rotated into two laterally positioned low temperature radiators and put on ice so it can be utilized again in the cooling circuit. The combustion air, which is at the ideal temperature, then enters the combustion chamber through the throttle valve and releases the force that catapults the 718 forward in a fraction of a second. Porsche had begun looking for an alternate fuel that would function in current engines because it was hesitant to switch to electric propulsion. Porsche claims that this synthetic fuel, which was made from water and thin air, effectively powered its 911 vehicle. The fuel is produced in Punta Arenas, Chile, at wind-powered plants close to South America's southernmost point. Given that wind blows there on average 270 days a year, the area is ideal for wind energy. Highly innovative fuels is able to produce methane, which is then transformed into fuel that functions similarly to conventional gasoline by combining carbon that is absorbed from the atmosphere with hydrogen that is obtained from water. The plant will produce green hydrogen via a process called electrolysis using sustainable and green renewable energy derived from wind power. The facility will also capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use the process of synthesis to combine the carbon dioxide and hydrogen to produce e-fuels including carbon-neutral methanol, e-methanol, carbon-neutral gasoline, e-gasoline, and carbon-neutral liquefied gas, ELG. These e-fuels offer a key opportunity for existing infrastructure to become carbon-neutral by continuously reusing and recycling carbon dioxide. Currently, the plant making the fuel has an output of 34,342 gallon a year, but by the end of this decade, it should be around 145.3 million gallons a year. The fuel does still emit carbon dioxide when it is burned. Still, it is considered a net zero fuel because it requires about the same amount of carbon to create it. Other car companies are also looking forward for alternatives for the future of car manufacturing. They seem to join Porsche with the CEO of Lamborghini, Stephen Winkelmann, saying his iconic car brand would be interested in this way to go greener. 
This is Anjana signing off. Do like and share this video. For further updates, subscribe to Comedy Global. You may also send in your feedback and news to comedyglobal at gmail.com. Yeah.